What up, what up, what up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 34 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. We are here yet again every Tuesday, every Thursday, wherever you stream podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Audio Mac. Actually, we're not on Audio Mac. Somebody asked, and I don't think we are. No, we're not. I don't, I don't, I don't think we are. Uh, yeah. But we're going to get there, right? We are going to get there. Now, as y'all know, Every single episode, we like to start off with a little advice. And this one has to do with money. How should you take your money? And I feel like uh, the advice is always said in this way, straightforward. It's common to hear, well, but I got a little bit of pushback, right? So how should you take money when you're doing your deals? We're going to start with a legend, not other than Magic Johnson. Sir, go ahead and talk that talk. I am the one in the national championship and three companies came in, Converse, Adidas, and Nike. Nike was just a year too old. Converse offered me the most money. So, you know, when you grow up broke, you, you take the money. Phil Knight came in and said, hey, I can't offer you the same type of money, but I can offer you stock. Round <laughs> We're trying to hear that then. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying. I, 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 and I didn't know nothing about it. And my family didn't come from money. Yeah. See, that's one thing that hurt us sometimes. When you don't come from money, you don't know. I didn't even know what right. stocks was at right. that time. So I passed on the stocks. Can you imagine? Damn. 45 years. Oof. $5 billion. Oof. Stock would have been worth today. Oof. Well, let me say this. When you don't know something, that's okay. It's when you know and then you make mistakes. Right. I'm a person who live in the moment. And if something happened to me that wasn't good, I leave it in the past and I keep moving forward. That's who I am. Oh, man. Oh, man. Five billion. Oh, man. Five billion. Now, it's so much. And I feel like a lot of people are here this and they're like, man, yeah, you know equity over money straight up but there's so many layers to this clip that i think about when i when i hear it man yeah um so number one shout out to magic because he always just got that that old like not that old black oh, uncle oh, yeah spirit <laughs> preacher vibes and him saying that he doesn't live in the past like that's something that we gotta accept first yeah. like when it comes to these deals i feel like a lot of people they start chasing bad decisions and then mess up their future decisions because they're so cut and about these bad uh about those bad decisions of the past. So you can't like think about every deal that you didn't win. Yeah, right? like you said, it was a learning lesson. I ain't it's a know. learning lesson. Yeah, I, I didn't know, right? Now that's a big, big loss yeah. in comparison, because he probably had some, you know, one million dollar losses, five million dollar losses. Here's a case. Yeah, but that's that's a big loss. But and, but it's also a loss you don't realize until later. You know what I'm saying? That's like, the thing. Yeah. So it, it probably didn't hurt as much yeah, exactly. as well because he's still successful too. All right, he's worth hundreds of millions. He just not worth five million. That's, that's different <laughs> money. That's different money. So with that being said, though, I think that what he said, like my family didn't come from money. He used it for a standpoint. He used it to make a point in terms of not knowing what the right decision would have been in that moment right yeah. but i think another thing to consider that a lot of people don't touch on in these moments is when you don't come from money sometimes you're in situations where you still don't have money and you make a decision based off of what you need at the moment yeah like him i don't know he's probably doing well off in general and probably could have waited but then there's some of those situations where I know even me now, I'm not talking about a five million dollar lo billion dollar loss, a big deal like that. Where there's been times coming up where I'm like, that's probably a better long term, but based on yeah, what shit looking right now, the way shit looking right now, right? I'm gonna have to make the right now decision. Yeah. Now again, that equation changes time to time, right? Let's just say. Oh, it's going to look like five billion. I'm going to just have to figure out how to make it through right now. However, I make it through. Right. That's a huge, that's a way bigger, bigger gap. But I'm like, uh, if, if we're talking about being a thousand up versus 300 right now, and it's like a one off thing it, when I was in certain places in life, eh, it, it, it made sense. Right. So I think there's that equation that people don't all they don't always acknowledge where yes we of course we know one i got to take some um making taking the back end equity is a great concept right but two 
if you dealing with your real life and there's still a risk of that thing not working out, then maybe you have to make that decision based on real life because it's not a guarantee that Nike would have got to the valuation that it would have got to today. Right. Right. It's true. So how do you analyze the situation? And I feel like a lot of times people just give that general advice of, oh, yeah, you want to have a piece of the back end without helping people understand that you do that in areas that you understand. It's a lot easier to do that in areas that you understand at least. Yeah. Right. And if you don't understand, it's really hard to make that decision because there's some companies that I've had opportunities to make investment decisions on. I just like put a little money in. Right. And I didn't make any investment. And then I had some that I did and I've had some succeed and fail. Yeah. And I knew, and I knew nothing about it. And I stopped doing that shit. Right. It's like, all right, cool. You need to stop doing that shit. And now I typically only invest in shit that I really get. Yeah. Right. And you know, when I get it, I already know what this is going to do. Of course, there's not a guaranteed win out of it, but I understand so much about it. The chances are that I'll probably win. Like the platform, I don't want to mention the platform right now in terms of investment, but I did go ahead and put some money into the platform, right? Yeah. So why? Because I come from tech and understanding a lot of different nuances and what it would take to succeed in that particular platform space. Obviously got a chance to spend quite a bit of time with the actual founder. That's another part of it, right? It can't just be the idea. Who's the person behind it? Because a bad person can mess up a great idea, right? And a great person can take a bad idea and flip it into something, right? Make it work. Right. So I'm like, oh, this is the right idea, the right timing, right founder, and the way the money, the founder's life is set up, he already got money to where he ain't even trying to make bad decisions. He he literally doing this for the bigger vision. So it was easy for me to make, you know, not all my money. I ain't have a lot of money to throw out in that particular situation, where as much as I wanted to, but I made a little investment in it, right? Easy because I understood it through and through. Saying that you should always take that back in, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff where, honestly, it's like ah. For me, if it's not my space, I kind of let those opportunities go to a lot of other people. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think you just kind of touched on the, the bigger part of it though, when your situation is usually it comes down to like how much do you believe in the company, if you're yes. willing to take that risk, right? Right. Because I'm sure in that same scenario, if it was someone where if you had met the founder or heard of the idea and you didn't believe in it as much like you know you're like nah I'm keeping keeping this money right not so much hundred percent I'm not saying shut it down bad guys you know what I'm saying but you <laughs> like oh I can hold on to this money for now yeah. this opportunity is doesn't make sense so I think that's the hard part to consider because I think I don't think we mentioned about this situation specifically is like Nike was like a new company or it was not, still newer but it was like you no know, pretty pretty babyish at that time they so a baby they don't have the proven track record of somebody like a Converse or like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, those type of brands. Like exactly. So I'm sure Magic is looking like, man, do I want to take this equity in this company that, you know, there are still giants in the marketplace that it's not competing with yet. To your point, he didn't have the foresight to know that Nike would be Nike today. Nobody did, right? But Nobody. once again, that comes back to faith in the vision of the company. Yep. Right? Do you believe that this company will go where they say they're going to go if you think so, and like you genuinely see it. And I was like, hey, man, you know, good investment for you. You feel like you got that eagle eye to see into the future. Let's see, let's see, right? That's but then you don't. You don't believe in values of the, the company, or even you no. Know, like I'm willing to think in his situation. Hey, man, I feel like there's another power player I want to get in bed with. I really believe in them more than I believe you. That's another thing. Yeah, this stuff is still risk assessment, gambles, because dealings. Yeah. yeah. How many billionaire VC firms? have turned down other companies that became billion dollar companies. Yeah, exactly. But they did it so they can invest in another company. And maybe that company took an L or that company was also a successful company. So it's like, I'm good. You know, that, that part, I only like to stress that part of that advice just because it's always nuanced to this stuff and people focus on this great advice that wasn't popular advice at one time because people didn't know to think about equity yeah. but now it's so far on that side of things people only think about equity and 
there's ways to think about equity. Like, wh how do you judge if the company, if equity in this company is worth it in general, the size of, of the market, the people involved in it? Um, and then, of course, what else is set up? Uh, set up in your life and I really feel a responsibility to say this because of the Jay-Z conversation <laughs> the Jay-Z or the meeting for y'all who don't know or remember we had we talked about that whole viral conversation would you take $500,000 in cash or a meeting with Jay-Z right I can't say. yeah and <laughs> what was a popular sentiment many people went with straight up 500k oh somebody's not worth it but then you had a lot of business people that were saying no man you take that meeting all right because you can flip that meeting into one thing after another thing after another thing and earn your leisure. Shout out to them. They talked about a very real situation where they met, I think it was Steve Harvey. And oh, Steve yeah. Harvey yeah. met him, uh, introduced him to Robert S. Smith, who was a billionaire, and got him in with Tyler Perry and all these different things snowball from that. And they're doing real things. Steve Harvey ended up investing in them. Now, what's the difference, though? They had something to invest in. They had a specific vision that they were working on. So, like, I know we were like, take the meeting with Jay-Z in general, but if in general you don't have any vision, you just like kind of moving around, you don't know what you want to do, then nah, you probably should take that 500K because yeah. yeah. Jay-Z wouldn't know what to invest in or like not even invest, like literally, but invest the time of the conversation. There's no specific value because you can't just go to people and like say, all right, what should I do with my life, right? Or give me some advice, like help me. Yeah, help me. Like that doesn't really come uh, turn into anything real. It was why. So early on, my freshman um, in college, I was around quite a few billionaires, and I didn't ever leverage a lot of my opportunity in that space because I had no idea what the fuck I wanted to do, and. The way I saw it was, I'm not about to like say, hey, give me this for me to work on something. And then also, I don't know, I, I actually like turn around five months later and they're like, damn, Sean just stopped. I done invested all my time. Now, I wasn't like super first person, first hand with, with those billionaires. I was in the vicinity. Had I talked mainly with the millionaires, but we were all in the space constantly and had some conversation with the billionaires or whatever. But like the point was, any of the people in the room, I didn't want to waste their time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like, oh, you, your homie be like, oh man, can you teach me some digital marketing? And then you take all your hard time, you teach him digital marketing. Three months later, he like, oh yeah, man, actually, um, I want to be a dentist or something like that. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. you said that, like that might have. Well, I know, but I have some stories, bro. <laughs> I well, I charge people for the game now, man. Tyler, you need to you know, get your CDLs and barber licenses after. Exactly. <laughs> but hey, for real. So that was that's my mentality, but that's also a position where you might want to just go ahead and take that 500K, yeah. especially just for one meeting. So you bring that back to the equity conversation and what Magic's talking about. Like, again, it's not just equity in general because there's also a risk assessment and something might not be successful, but when you do know something and you understand that space, which probably encourages you to like say, Hey, you need to start understanding these spaces and things you're investing in. You might have more of a, you, you'll have a better judgment on if the chance of it being successful is high. If it's not super successful, do you still win something? Yeah. Right. And yeah. if it's a failure. Also, can you deal with a failure? Right. Magic. Eh, you know, this has some leeway. He had some leeway. leeway. He had a lot of leeway. This is like that Monday morning quarterback and game's over, and I'm just speculating, playing from the sidelines. I don't know, Magic, you already had some money. You know what I mean? I think he owns some radio stations by this time. Uh, and he would have been the power of the endorsement, right? Yeah. So he it, it would have been on and leaned around him. I don't know, man. That, that might have been... It was a little bad drop. Yeah, you know, it, it was it was a little bad drop, but that's like me saying for, for, from the future. I, but I do think it could have been successful. The, before we get into the other topics, though, the one interesting note I think someone in the comments said was this would have changed the trajectory of the history of Nike because they probably wouldn't have invested in Jordan 
in the hand my uh, magic they would already had a superstar they would have already had a superstar yeah. and they were just trying to get in the game they were like hey how can i make this shit shape yeah. so and, and they definitely wouldn't have been giving jordan equity like that yeah because they already had equity here and magic yeah. so i don't know that definitely would have changed things maybe nike wouldn't have become nike because like five billion oh jordan is a significant part of what launched nike to the next level yeah, yeah. like jordan is literally yes i'll end it no <laughs> i'll say so some of the rest of this later after the fact <laughs> but but they were able to utilize jordan not just for jordan himself but the brand equity they got from their association with Jordan, which is why that he I, I was able to get such a big deal. Like, so now you got all this other, uh, all these other revenue streams tied to Jordan that Jordan has no participation in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like Jordan was worth a lot to them. And I actually read Phil Knight's nice book. I feel like he did. He like skipped over Jordan. He didn't touch on him enough because yeah. he was like probably, little ego like hey man i don't want people thinking that he built this shit i built this shit that's what i felt bro it was like nah man y'all you gotta acknowledge how big it was a great book dude went through a lot of course you play integral role but nah he ain't really like for like at all he really didn't mention jordan which was crazy to me you talk about the whole nike history nah it's trash but you know it is what it is anyway <laughs> in other news is the United States making worse music than everybody else in the world? I want y'all to watch this clip and tell me what you think. Definitive thing that makes you a star, in my opinion, or I think so, is a song. That I'm making songs that are going to cross them over and make them who they're supposed to be. I feel like, okay, cool, we like their vibe, we like their mixtape, we like the album. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's some, it's some hints of greatness in there. But when you talk about stars, like when 50 Cent put out um in the club yeah yeah, yeah smash yeah yeah right like you just need those songs and the songs have to be produced and made if we isolate central c he's not american no but he's probably a star already in london oh he, he's a right? right? superstar so what you're saying is happening it just doesn't seem to be happening domestically right now mm. because we're making the worst music whoa damn <laughs> justice is back <laughs> how we are the united states is making the worst music jacory do you think the united states is making the worst music the worst the worst music i don't know if i can say the worst man because i mean i don't want to single any particular region of the world out you know <laughs> um and, and attack anybody's quality oh, of music on, but man. Attack, I mean, attack man i'm not super deep like the only countries i super pay attention while i super pay attention to that music industry is like you know us of course latin latin american countries you know a couple like south african countries like in the afro world but that ties into my music type you know what i'm saying like i'm not looking at let's say like russia's music scene for example because what i've typically heard from there in the past is ain't, ain't my cup of tea maybe they got something along my my line or my lane that would change my mind but from what usually makes it out of there what it represents them it's like it's not really my thing All right but the worst music bro no nah, we we i i can't say that because it's, it's still too many other countries that emulate like our music style you know okay okay but you can emulate and improve. You're right. That's true. All right. That's true. I'll say this. Latin America, United States, Korea, Tokyo, and then a, a few countries in Europe I listen to. And I feel like in other countries, there seems to be almost a retro approach to the music and I mean a retro United States like you say yeah like we're still leading a lot of the culture in that way but you know how a lot of people say oh it's not like it used to be and they act like what it used to be was better yeah especially like let's just look at k-pop let's sit, center on k-pop the investment into the music videos and what they have at the top and they're really showing is it's like 90s in terms of music yeah. video investment, yeah. dance routines, all that stuff going on. Yeah. And I remember from the very moment I like found out about it, my homegirl, uh, Polina, she put me on to K-pop in maybe 2012, 11. And I was just like, bro, this is, I can understand a thing, but I resonated with a lot of it because it just, it just 
felt like what maybe early 2000s what was popular over here a lot of it like you can see them emulating or whatever so there's some argument in in terms of maybe that the approach to artistry and the approach to artistry without the viral virality that we need in america because america is very the shit that we talk about right it's very much so focused on these narratives marketing yeah. going viral trying to stand out and get attention for the sake of attention in hopes to flip it back to your music right so i can argue that that environment probably doesn't foster the best music as an environment that's still more music driven first with of course the bells and whistle because it's still entertainment just like it used to be but it's not really caught up in this let me go smash a tv right to get some attention let me go uh drive through the mall on a motorcycle to get some attention the shit sam sent us the other day what's uh that group name things or i don't remember that. i forgot his name or whatever and i don't think anything wrong with it i thought like the way they put it together is dope but we're in a space in america where we have to do shit like that a lot of times to get attention which sucks yeah i mean i think because i think our thing as a country is cheap entertainment you know what I'm saying? Like, how can we how can we strike the biggest flame with the least amount of matches, pretty much, right? In terms of yeah. production quality, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? We see it in the music. You know, we've seen hit songs come out that were made in closets. Yeah, you know what I'm saying the back of vans and shit like that. But then even um, on like TV, man, you see like networks like Netflix and Hulu and stuff. Always trying to figure it out, right? How can we get this hit TV show with the smallest budget possible? We had the conversation right. about Tyler Perry, but it was Tyler Perry's whole formula. Like, how can I get the most amount of hit movies? Hey. For the least amount of money spent as possible. So, yeah, I do think I, I, I couldn't say, like, why. A part of me wants to say it's probably because we're such a capitalistic, you know what I'm saying, capitalism based country. That's part of it, probably. Yeah, you know, probably. Honestly, that probably, is, that probably is exactly what it is. So, I, I do think we're starting to, like, notice that seeping into the music. But I still don't think that makes us the worst. That's what I'm saying, bro, the worst. I can't, I can't boldly say the worst. And com well, I could boldly say it. I could say anything bold, but I can't confidently <laughs> and f fully, authentically, and truthfully say it's the worst yeah. and mean it because I don't listen to every single country, every type of music. But what I can say is the environment today does not necessarily lean towards the most positive environment yeah, to yeah. foster good music. But like we, the country that made like reality tv i don't know if we made it popular but i feel like i don't feel like any other country that had a reality tv run like the u.s has had you know what i'm saying yeah and you think about a lot of do you know why why i mean you started to talk about it oh yeah. oh the capital the capital capitalism that shit yeah. cheap yeah. we don't gotta have no real actors yeah. people who spend time and build a craft they want more money yeah so we gonna have some regular people we can flip this attention you've already built in something else live this Market it as an op so you get paid a little bit, but you can flip it into your branding and we can churn these out like clockwork. Yeah. So I was like, bro, you have this whole generation of artists that grew up on like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That. And then you introduce the internet and memes and things like that. Like reality yeah. TV and memes go hand in hand, but they're both cheap forms of, of mass <laughs> entertainment. Right? Guilty pleasure content. And the guilty pleasure is not supposed to be your main pleasure. That's the problem. I mean, but when that shit working, you know what I'm saying? It's like, the same. I think a lot of the things that I think other people complain about with music was started by rappers. But with rappers, it makes sense, I think. You know what I'm saying? Because like rap, we're typically used to being like, it's not lower you said quality. We? You said we? No, you said rappers we're used to. You still got some hidden tracks? No, 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 no. No, I'm saying like, <laughs> I think, oh, uh, I get you saying. You're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious, no? <laughs> but it's just, I, I'm saying like like we as our music, nah, nah, like nah. we'll be like all oh, these cheapening of things. Sometimes I think it's yeah. tied back to what we typically see rappers do. But like rappers are still not being competed with when it comes to like that type of like social manipulation and forms like memes and like cheap comedy stuff. Yeah. So, but I think a lot of that thing, a lot of that makes sense for the genre because that genre typically requires you know not not a lot of work, but like less work. In, in some instances compared to like other types of music. Uh, rap has typically been super appealing to people that come from like lower income areas. So these are people we don't have any money, right? How do they figure out how to, you know, you're an artist in the back fucking nowhere with no money. You're trying to get lit. 
Like, what you gonna do? What's gonna get your attention? Oh man, if I do some stupid shit, you know what I'm saying? Let's not even let's just take it away from stupid shit. Let's not let's not imagine the world. Let's just say like something be stupid, yeah. Yeah, let's just say something that's meant that's I did on my phone that was meant to grab a lot of attention. Yeah, I'm saying let's keep it at that. Yeah, good, bad, however you want to feel about it. Then that's what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna lean more into that because I'm going to feel like. Yo, when I put my investment into this thing, I put all these hours into this thing over here, which we can say is the music quality. Yep. It doesn't necessarily give me the return I want to see, but I go put half of that time into figuring this thing out, this attention thing. Yeah. And everything I want starts to happen, right? People hit me up and we have fans and we have listeners. So you you can't you can't knock the way that people have been trained to think about how they should put their stuff I'm on. not knocking it. I'm just observing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's been interesting to see that not only have we not, be, not only do we not lead culture as much as we used to, mm-hmm. we copy culture, mm-hmm. right? I remember when anime start seeping into all of our shit all right now it's a huge driver yeah right before it was this type of content that we experienced that was foreign right yeah. but from that it actually was like a virus it's like oh man we gonna give them some of this sauce and eventually the future generations yeah, they, gonna love that shit. they gonna love that love shit right that shit. we we forming and we taking over the whole country one kid at a time and now our stuff a lot of our stuff is inspired by anime all right whatever and then the entire i don't want to say entire japanese experience but so many of the things that are originated in japan right um like fashion all right, so even beyond anime, because they hit us from no two directions, right? Yeah. And were, even the Harajuku girls, even though that became a whole polarizing thing at yeah. one point, yeah. or whatever. Um, if even recently, apparently, when Stefani said that she was Japanese and and it became a thing, All right for real? Yeah, she said she was Japanese. Ah, I don't want to get too far into it, but it was just one of those things getting too comfortable. You know, they come into the house, eat all the food, and then. You know, all of a sudden they think you want to, want to, yeah. they know they feed up on your soul. Yeah, yeah, feed up. It was just one of those things. She really didn't mean nothing by, like bad by it, but she may have messed up, you know. Um, <laughs> she thought she was so one with the culture. She just said, I'm Japanese. That's really what she was coming okay, from. Okay. Yeah, that's where she was coming from, but, and, you know, the internet and people sensitive these days to that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> Like, but with that same concept, though, bro, like, I, I, I think it's hard to fight the idea that music, specifically music for the sake of music, it is not what it used to be in terms of the nuances, in terms of quality. And I think other spaces are behind. And because they're behind, they might there might be more attention to music, but I think they're going to end up where we are. I don't think they're like guarding it. Yeah. Right. And saying we want to stay here. They're just behind. That's all it is. Yeah. They're paying attention to it. And then and some countries, bro, it'd be so many interesting things going on with that music industry. You know, like some countries, governments be involved. Yeah. Higher degrees. Exactly. You know what I'm like some countries, corporations be involved mm-hmm. to higher degrees, right? Higher or lesser degrees. So it's so many different variables. Yes. That goes into things like that. But yeah, because they're all going to eventually look and go like, oh, America has figured out this whole like cheap attention shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we want in on that. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, K-pop artists, I need y'all to start making some viral videos. You know what I'm saying? I need y'all to you know, make some memes and things like that. So I think the influence is going to hit. But now I do kind of maybe want to backtrack a little bit because as you were talking, I was trying to run through my head. Like, who's a who's kind of like dumb man right now? And like, a lot of the artists are like foreign artists, bro. You know, foreign to us in the States. Central yep. C, Tams, uh, you know, Bad Bunny, you know what I'm saying? Um, who I feel like I'm missing. Somebody. Yes, because, okay. oh, we actually missed the co- that part of the conversation because they did say superstars. Yeah, superstars, yeah. Are we producing new superstars? Like, who knew? Because I think our current superstars are still the old ones, right? Like the Taylor Swift, the Beyonce's, the Justin Bieber's. Well, Justin Bieber. Yeah, no, nah, he old. Yeah, old. But he from Canada. Oh, oh, oh damn. We can't even fully claim Justin. Yeah, exactly. Hey. But right. I mean, but he no, he was in Atlanta with us. Yeah, he, he yeah, he counts. We so, 
But yeah, I can't think of like who's the most recent new superstar that the U.S. has produced. Cardi B. So then Lil Nas X. Lil Nas X probably after Cardi B. Well, I guess is Lil Nas X a superstar? We, I, I would consider Lil Nas X a superstar. <sighs> I think. So then I don't know because I maybe that I wonder how we judge it. Like, are we talking about worldwide? I don't know what his reach is because I know his streams. Yeah. Right, are like superstar streams and a demographic that he has a hold on is like superstar like, mm -hmm. but I don't know because I because I really say Cardi B, but I don't say it with full confidence because I think Cardi B's she should be like superstar level yeah, technically, so. yeah. right? But then when you mention Beyonce, right, that's a different level, yeah, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but then you know, at Central C is too new to like fully put him there but i think well i don't know how big he is and i of course uk you know he's big yeah. but i don't truly have a full sense of his level bad buddy i got a sense of his level like oh he's pretty much on beyonce's level don't kill me you know I mean? <laughs> folks who, who feel a certain way i'm just talking about sheerly in terms of numbers he's early on so he has a lot to do but he's going to be on that trajectory where 10, 20 years from now, he still will have a, a strong resounding impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's on a lot of people that are outside that primary demographic. So when I try to separate and even say Cardi B. That was guy, maybe? No, I don't know. Yeah. I can't give it to Cardi B. Can we give it to those guys? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like we know their personalities can definitely yeah. transcend. I think they have the talent to, um, and even Do Doja Cat, like the more stereotypical markability attached to her. But <clears throat> I don't know, man. Like, I mean, he might be right. That's what I'm saying. I can't think of nobody. I'm trying, bro. Like, y'all leave somebody in the comments. I'm trying. Who's the last superstar? Because, all right, how do we define a superstar? One thing that I think would go with the term superstar is when you have so many people outside of the primary demographic that know the person. Yeah. All right. You've reached the top of your niche, broken past that niche, and now you're in pop. But then beyond pop, right? Not just successful pop, but you're beyond pop and you're transcending like that popular culture where grandma all the way down to the kid knows them, your country and other countries like know this person. That's a a different space. Well, I guess what could also change the argument a little bit is just as we're talking about song, not necessarily like personality, right? Like brand. And that's, yes. Yeah. So that does that's kind of makes it harder. That does kind of move the goal a little bit. Because then it's like, what's the last massive song to come from? What, Steve Lacey, maybe? Like the that song? The, yeah, yeah, we shine. See, now, I mean, we just stick straight to music, which, look, this is music, so <laughs> it, is, it doesn't hurt. To just say, because I don't even consider that uh, moving in bold goalposts, right? Because we're talking about music at the core. We're talking about artists. Thirty million. So bad habit has what, what six hundred eleven million, million streams. I was like, what makes me say that is because Justice specifically mentioned Central C is like a London UK, a London artist. But then to your point, it's like, yeah, he's big, but he's not like Beyonce, right? Like, right. That that different level. So now this is like, okay, if we're keeping it just music like this, but he's gonna get there. I think he's gonna get there, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, you're gonna be solid. He doesn't have as many monthly listeners as Steve Lacey right now. Oh, Interesting bro. enough, yeah, he, he's about a million less. But Central C is a lot hotter, mm -hmm. obviously, from a commercial standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's the weird thing because superstar, superstar is not a solely music thing. I know that he said we got to have the music, and of course, but you superstar is a combination of the music with the personality or aura and all of that stuff. Like there's been people who was the, there's this guy named Nick Kyrgios. He plays tennis, right? This dude, if he, well, he actually has the talent to be like number one in the world, but he has like just other issues, anger issues and things like that. But even, yeah, but it's, oh, uh, he's interesting. He, he's hard, but he's, he's like, he got like a hip hop, like basketball swagger, but he plays tennis. It's, 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 it's interesting. Um, and he'll take these long breaks. Like literally his thing is like, oh yeah, I played tennis like three months out the year. While, you know, opposite is like Kobe mentality. I always practice and that's what most people are doing. So he's not ranked where he should. But the point is, 
even if he just stay consistent. His brand, if you watch him next to the other players, he could be a superstar. Just you just see it. He has that it factor, right? Um, so you don't even have to be the best, right? Which I think about music. You don't have to be the best to be the biggest superstar. People always get mad. Oh, this person isn't even as good as that person. Well, that's when they go and get into that it factor lane. Like this person doesn't sing as good. There's other factors into creating superstar. You know, it's building a player and there's multiple rankings, right? What is your your vocal talent? What is your talent for hearing production, your song selection, your personality, your I don't know, right? There's there's multiple levels to, uh, to, or, or multiple things to gauge. I don't know all of them. Maybe we should build a superstar one day and figure out what all those gauges were. That would be hard. You know what I mean? Hey, some of y'all make our lives easier. If y'all got time, put it in the comments and we can maybe argue about <laughs> what y'all think makes a, a superstar and what are all those gauges to consider. But but it's not it's not fully a music conversation, but of course he does go back to music. So to me, it's, it's technically inconclusive, but I do go back to the argument that America right now, actually, uh, I'll say that later. The United States right now does not have an environment that fosters the best of music. A lot of creativity in general, but the best music that it can specifically. Now, why I paused for a second was because I said America and I realized, man, I say America a lot, but that's like that entitled, like better than American mentality, <laughs> United States mentality, because it's like, hey, it's. Central America, America bro. <laughs> Canada's in North America. I'm gonna let you in the comments, bro. I want to say, <laughs> just say the United States. Just say the United States. We be at the white. Man, it's stressful over here, man. I don't know. I don't know how the artists over here doing it. Hey, nah, nah. It is. It's it's different, man. It's definitely different. But with that being said, man, let's get into a very similar conversation along these lines. Central C. Speaking of him. Is Central C an industry plant? Right. What do you think, Jacory? Right. You don't think it's an industry plant? My boy ain't no industry plant. All right. Now, I'm not even going to get into the deep idea of what technically is an industry plant or not. Well, I probably will at some point. But the way, the reason this topic was inspired was because there was a TikTok video. I put it up on the screen. We can't actually play it because TikTok, you know, YouTube, that copyright that copyright strike we're not trying to get that but we'll we'll play it on the screen y'all can just watch it move as we talk about what happened oh, nothing wrong your day yeah. by seeing that x next to the video all right exactly <laughs> so central c is actually signed to ada uh -huh. right now their whole conversation again went to know well people kind of say he's independent but he signed to something well he's not signed to to warner or any major directly ADA is a distributor up under Warner, though. Yeah. Right. And to me, this actually just speaks to the reality of music today. All right. Because the reality of music today is, yo, the distributors are record labels, but they're better positioned record labels. Mm -hmm. Right. They're better positioned because of the branding you can put on it. Oh, artists, you get a better deal than you normally would. But it's also better position because I can invite you in without having to take the same level of risk. And then I could just cherry pick the people, you know what I mean, that, that look like they're going to be a little bit more successful and then build a relationship with them. All right. Now, him being signed to a distributor, of course, he does still control more things. But I think that's just the nature of the game today. And independent almost should be washed away or we should clearly define independent. Because to me, it's so much marketing language versus the reality of what this is. I don't think independent means today what people originally meant when they said independent. Yeah, like it literally means today independent of a major label. Independent of a major label. Yeah. But there's a billion other entities <laughs> out there yeah. that you can be in partnership with and you are still signed to them, right? Even labels. If you're signed to a major, it could be the same deal and they just call it a partnership. Why? Because that shit sounds better on paper. It's better for your ego, but the numbers work out the same if I just signed you, right? All of this stuff, eh, I don't I don't really buy into it 
But Central Seed being independent, is he technically independent? Sure. Let's let's stick with that. All right. He has a distributor. Of course, he has an infrastructure management team in their building and they're doing a hell of a job. Right. I don't think technically independent or not matters outside of the narrative that people want to push to inspire the indies or to keep the indies trapped in, depending on which side you on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's what it comes out to, man. Like we on the other side of it, of the, the, the indie artists, you know, propaganda push, you know what I'm saying? Like we've been strong components of it, you know, like, well, we've been pushing the narrative for yeah. the last couple of years. We benefit from it. And yeah. I think that's just how a lot of these music companies look at it, bro. Like, hey, the, cause what independent, the, the bigger the independent artist community grows, the bigger the independent labor community grows, right? There can be more distribution companies. There yes. can be more marketers like us, right? It can be more yes. publishers and these different people. So yeah, we gotta sprinkle it on a couple of things, make it look sexy to keep people wanting to stay in that space. Because once again, like I said, I look at indie now as independent of a major label, right? Not even just from an artistic standpoint, but just from a resource standpoint, right? Like I'm able to go and get these things despite you, right? Yeah. Despite what you have control of and what you can make happen with, with your thing, which is a good thing for the market overall, but I still see it that way, bro. It's like literally like, hey, like we have to keep doing things and saying things and putting this label on certain people that encourages the community to look at it that way because of, it benefits everybody. And like I said, I don't think that's a bad thing, but that's just reality, you know? Like I'm, I'm, I'm stringing the the indie artist narrative for as long as it can go because if it wasn't for indie artists, would we have an agency? You know what I'm saying? Would we be making this channel if every artist was tied to that type of institution and couldn't? I we'll probably we would find a way, but yeah, we we would be with the labels. But we would contract through them a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. Now. Yeah, exactly. But you already know what. Yeah, well, I'll try to yeah, we'll try to keep it. away from that. Minimize <laughs> that as much as possible. But it makes it easier for us to do that because of the. Indie yeah. history. The indie marketplace, yeah. So I think, like, yeah, you're going to have these really blurry situations where, like you said, the the narrative is a lot stronger. Hey, he's independent, so he must be doing all this by himself and X, Y, Z, and like, oh, we want to support him because he's the underdog competing against this major later act. And you look at him like, man, bro, he got more, well, not him specifically, but that particular artist got more resources maybe even more attention, more hands-on than that major label artist yep. that you look at. That's where we get to the point right there. <laughs> yeah, because to be a superstar on a sit in a situation like that, you're not going to get treated any differently than a, a major act on a major label. They're gonna, they, you are the major act there, but you're getting that same treatment. Anything yes. you want, even if it's outside the parameters of what that company typically does, but I've seen it. I've seen it for certain clients where it's like, hey, we don't usually do this, <laughs> but yo, shit is going so well over here with this person that we gonna do whatever we need to do to make this happen for him. Mm-hmm. And in that situation, what's the difference between the label? You know what I'm saying? The company that only promised you distribution for 10 and 20% is now willing to get you investment, and now willing to get you certain looks, now willing to help you build out your team, your infrastructure, and all these other things. Like, what's the difference at that point? You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so, independent to me, man. To me. <laughs> <laughs> independent of major labels. It's all ours say, which I think yes. I think we should stand on that definition because that will make the conversation a little bit uh a little bit more tepid. You know what I'm saying? Like this conversation gets hot because people people feel a certain way about it, bro. Are there gonna be people who are gonna see this they're like, oh Central Cities and Indy because you got a distribution company helping you. And it's like I mean, you're not wrong and you're not right. Like what about all the other things you have to go figure out? You know what I'm saying? Like these one entities don't necessarily become the 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 most like they're not always the most like game changing elements of everything. Sometimes they're a stepping stone to help you put together the different components that you need to put together that make the game changing situation for you, right? Like that situation, I and like I said, I don't know, just speculating here, but let's just say that's the situation that allowed him to make money to then go pay like his content team or something, right? And then that's the situation. I mean, those those content pieces popped him up on TikTok or something like that, right? It's like it becomes more about like the pieces of the the big picture that leads to the success rather than like, oh, you just have this big corporation behind you. Because we've seen it that that doesn't always mean anything, right? You can be tied to some of the biggest entities in music and nothing happens. Plenty of artists have failed that have so many not being quote unquote independent. But I think I personally just want to encourage artists 
to understand business and do good business. Yeah. Because the independent conversation is even a distraction of sorts to me. All right. All of these things that you get see, all of these things that you see get pushed a lot. Let you know that there's some agendas behind it. Yeah, bro, right? marketing, bro. It's, it's always marketing. Like, oh man, everybody's indie, 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 indie. Why do I see this so much? Because it's speaking to a certain message and it's encouraging a certain marketplace to flourish that I can capitalize off yeah. of. That's simple. Exactly, bro. You gotta always look at who's pushing it. And like I said, not to a bad degree. Like I was willing to admit that, hey, we pushing it because it's much easier doing business with an indie artist than it is doing, you know what I'm saying, business with a major. I want more indie artists to be have major label budgets so we can, you know what I'm saying, move to that process. Oh, yeah, For, <laughs> definitely that. I just think that people get so caught up in this language stuff versus the actual mechanics behind it all. Yeah. Like, what's actually happening? Make sure something different is occurring because if you're in a old school bad deal, but you use the language independent and the label that's working with you says yeah you're independent why does it matter mm -hmm. all right because you're still in that bad deal all right if you're in a good deal and people think you're signed why does that matter right outside of pushing the marketing message and then saying i want to brand around independence like chance the rapper did heavily mm -hmm. and that but you know that becomes something that you can capitalize off of so you have this reason and agenda right to make sure people see it in that way, right? So, I don't know, for me, I think that when we get into this indie shit and the way people talk about it, it's really based off of old indie, which is why it's best to differentiate specifically, like you said, independent of a major label, mm -hmm. all right? Not independent of help, all right? And we get into DIY, do it yourself. No, nah, you not do it all yourself, right? You have to go into partnerships in this music industry. In some you know, form of fashion, some piece of the pie. Some piece of the pie. You're not going to have the entire vertical yourself, even if you have a marketing team, a content team, um, PR, like team. PR team, and all that stuff. You might get to a label. I mean, a level. Like, let's just say you're on Beyonce says level. You can create your own distribution company and all that stuff. So you're earning owning that entire vertical. But even then, there still ha have to be partnerships to get on these Spotify playlists or whatever, right? Or and deal with those people to work with, let's say, Live Nation. There's always going to be some type of partnership that comes into space in music and the entertainment industry, the way it's built out. It just kind of just has to be. So if anything, let the idea of independent me more so. Just understand the business, understand what you are. I don't even want to say what you're worth because People take that and they <laughs> route with it and it'd be the wrong number. But understand like what leverage looks like <laughs> in a business. You know what I'm saying? And also make sure that you get as much of an entrepreneurial spirit that makes sense for you. Right. So you might want to build heavily and own a whole thing, but there's some people who don't want to even work like that. Right. And and own the system and have all that rely on them. And that's fine. And they both can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Right. But is Central C independent by the ignorant indies opinion? No. By an experienced old school label perspective. No, as well. By someone in the middle, <laughs> someone in the middle who's more moving in this new space. Yes, he's indie in terms of an independent of a major label. But you'll hear the old folks like they're like, oh, no, because this is exactly the same shit. <laughs> so, you're not. <laughs> they would be like, I, I remember when Chance was like, oh, indie, indie, indie. And he didn't have the deal. But all the people who knew the business, they were like. What are you? What is he talking about? This is the exact same shit. You can't get here without this type of partnership. This type of partnership. Yeah, he doesn't have a major label, but literally, it's the same thing in a different house. Mm -hmm. All right, so you know, what I mean, same meal with all the no. Let's get different plate on the fixings. <laughs> So 
So y'all take that as y'all will, man. You want to be, you want to make India part of your brand. You care. Just make sure your business is right and you can sleep at night. Let's go with that one. Yeah, bro. Just... Now, if you're using that for marketing, or you you truly trying to do it, yeah. all the way, nah, all the way. Yeah. I don't think y'all want to see what it's like all the way. All the it's, way. It's stressful all the way. <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of early gray hairs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you know four hour sleep nights. You know, right, right. No four hour work week. Four hour <laughs> sleep night. <laughs> now, with that being said, also same conversation, similar conversation. Can you be as big as Drake as an independent artist? La Russell has an opinion. I, you know, we gonna talk. He was going label meanings, and I used to ask him, "Do you think it's possible to be as big as Drake as an indie?" And we used to get a lot of doubt, and and like, ah, I don't know. You'd have to go through this, this, through, through this system, and it's like, if I got here independently. I can only get bigger, you know? I know what I did to get here. So if I do it times 10, that means I'm gonna get a 10 times multiple in my growth. If I do that times 100, I'm gonna get a 100 times multiple. So yeah, I definitely believe so. I mean, I'm here mm -hmm. and I'm completely independent. You feel mm -hmm. me? On this platform, most of the people who come on here have a label behind them. It's part of their PR rollout, the press, but we don't have a label behind it. Mm -hmm. I got some thoughts on this. And I don't think you can be as big as Drake, independent in today's climate in today's climate, but that's also because we see independent differently, mm -hmm. right? Partnerships, et cetera, independent of a major label and be pretty damn big. I think that's only going to grow. You're going to be able to get bigger and bigger independent of a traditional major label, right? Cool. But if we're talking about the nuances of the relationships and things that have to be in place, the type of partnerships that ultimately are going to have to be in place, you're still going to need to to move in a very very similar fashion you'll just own a lot more than a drake does of his own vertical you might have that team of again content your own distribution or something somehow whatever that might look like but i don't think you can be that big i'll get into some of the nuances of why in a second but i want to hear what you think before i go deeper i think somebody will be eventually I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because see, that's a today's climate. That's what I said. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause it's like, we're just now starting to see the effects of people. What breast start preaching the independent thing. We're like 2017, maybe 18. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right. So we're now starting to see the offspring of the people who were listening to him and paying attention, right? All those kids and younger artists that cared enough to pay attention to rest. They're all, you know, now adults, you know, now further along in their careers. And we're starting to see a lot of them move and take this, that type of stuff well, seriously. We're going to make rest a line in the stand, a BR and AR? Uh, I think so. Like, who, who else could it be? Who else could it be? I don't know. I don't have a specific line. I just I, I just don't think he was the beginning of the independent conversation. Well, that's all. I, I think, like, mainstream for a lot of music artists. Because Not 100%. He, yeah, he was, a, he was the first one to, like, make it tangible right like i'm gonna show you tune core statements i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna talk about this and i'm gonna he, show you he is the example of this generation for sure and he 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 set the tone in a different way yeah on a, yeah. On a whole other level and he made a point of making that so I, i'm not taking that for, from him yeah. i just wanted to see what your thoughts were you know gotta gotta throw something oh, yeah. no, i get it man no, look <laughs> look man look i i give it a rest on that man because he, he made that i think there were people who talked about it but it always sounded like really like corporate really stuffy like it was different like like i said watching like russ on like an instagram live stream like oh yeah i'll show you how my tone course they made mm -hmm. we just do this it, like it made it feel more tangible right so now we're getting people who are in the era where they grew up on that and we're starting to see a lot more artists care about that put that into practice now the thing that i think makes it hard for indie artists to compete with major label artists is usually two things it's typically Let's just say resources, mainly mm -hmm. capital, but let's just keep it at resources. Mm -hmm. And then infrastructure, bro. Like mm -hmm. infrastructure in a way that's like different, right? So like Russell brought the point, like, hey, I'm on Breakfast Club. A platform is typically, you know what I'm saying, used by major artists. And I'm here without any type of major backing. Like we've known you can get on these platforms if you, if you are connected to the right people, right? If I go hire the same publicist that, I don't know, j cole is using it's possible that i could get on some of the same publications that j cole is getting on because at least this person has access to that right well i think that's how i typically look at what might not be considered is one 
the the weight of the relationship from the other side, right? So if I'm a major label and I'm the Breakfast Club, I'm probably tapping the Breakfast Club is probably tapping in with the major labels, seeing who's up there. They should come. They, they should come by the same way. Labels are going to be continuing to tap into the Breakfast Club to make sure, hey, shit's hot. So when we're ready to send people your way, you good, you fuck with us, right? When you're an individual and you're not tied to a major corporation, you don't usually get that same level of treatment from the part your partners. Yep. Unless you were like massive, you know what I'm saying? You like a, like you tell us with like tell us with Spotify and all these different platforms probably reach out to her, you know what I'm saying? Every quarter. Like you got some shit coming up we need to be thinking about. I would think they'd be that. But if you like someone that's even not even just small, just say like three, four steps below her like that, you you might not be getting those same types of like reach outs all the time, right? Right. Um so I think that becomes the part that makes it hard for artists to get to that level. It's not that you can do it, it's staying top of mind and then maintaining that level of infrastructure where you're keeping up with all these different partners and things that you need to pretty much your machine, right? Like your machines, you have to keep activating, keeping up with that for a long period of time. is taxing, it's exhausting and it's expensive. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. The problem is not just, can people have access to my music today? All right. Can I go direct to consumer on, whatever part of my vertical, the, the music, the touring, the merch, whatever, it's because of the relationships at hand that makes music such a partnership heavy industry. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get into the blur line between independent or just independent of a major label. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think it has to at least be acknowledged when we had these conversations, the economics of relationships, right? The way that for people to naturally move and their incentives to put people in the room that they're connected to, put people in a room that they can trust. Why can they trust them? Cause they might be connected to them and their incentives are in line. They have a similar agenda, right? Um, where they've been brought in through somebody else that you trust, right? So though, once we talk about at scale, not make more money than Drake, I believe the wrestle, if that's his ambition and he has the way to do it, he can make more money than Drake ultimately, right? And not even necessarily just do music. Cool. Are we talking about bigger and being a superstar in the same traditional sense of superstar that's a whole nother story right and look by all means go that route because i'm not even somebody who desires that type of you know energy and like facial recognition so it's a little different but but i but if that's what you're going for in terms of superstar be as big as drake in that way i think it's you have to acknowledge not just big not in, at home all right not just big at you know domestically so in your city not big in the nation we're talking about big around the world facial wise not just more money we're talking about facial branding all right considered a big artist and then how do you get into all the spaces that allow for that yeah yeah all right yeah like oh and how do you continue to do the R and D that's required to continue to stay old top over time as an individual entity that doesn't have a lot of those same partnerships? Cause that's extremely difficult. All the R and D that we get from running our agency, right? But then also maximizing that to all these other streams like touring R and D, right? Let's just say NFT R and D, um, whatever you know there's so many different categories it's hard to truly master all those things alone so i don't want to be like discouraging or, or hating against the the idea of an indie artist being big i just think when we talk about specifically the facial recognition traditional superstar box that we think of at the moment as we both agree at the time it's hard for me to see that occurring without some partnerships that would make me personally say, uh, ah, you're not indie, indie. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that that's the way I think about it. Yeah, I mean, and 
No, that goes back to kind of what I was saying earlier. Like, why I don't I think it'll happen? I just don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon because we are we are now in the era where we're watching artists attempt to do it. Yeah. Right? So that means we're watching in real time. You know what I'm saying? Not even just rush. Like we're watching major label artists leave their label and attempt to go indie. Right. We're watching yeah. artists pop on platforms like TikTok and YouTube and things and choosing to stay the indie route to build themselves out. So like we're watching in real time artists try to figure it out. Going back to what I was saying earlier, it's not enough of them to talk enough about infrastructure. Because you mentioned something, right? Like even even thinking about like the level of superstar, right? Like you have your local practices, you have your regional practices, you have your national practices. You have, you're like I don't think there's enough artists yet talking about what that entire pipeline looks like. You control that pipeline looks like because there's not enough of them that understand it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like these artists that we're watching in real time are going to be the ones that in maybe four to seven years from now, like we've watched enough of them go through it. They've talked about it enough to the same degree that the rest do. And now artists coming at that time maybe has a serious chance of competing, making that happen, right? But I just think right. like we're, we're in the guinea pig era of indie artists and like there's a lot that comes with being the first person to figure that path out for other people. Exactly. I think this era will run into problems to say, ah, oh, that's why I didn't get there because I didn't have this, but then be able to teach it to the next generation for sure. They're going to do it, right? They'll do it. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe they'll do it. But I still, just because of the scale and the amount of humans involved, yeah, right, it's hard to do it independently, right? I think a better way of positioning it to me is I think there will be a day where you can be massive without losing your freedom in the way that you would lose it before. Right. Like you have more control of your business. You can do shorter term deals. You'll have a lot of leverage without ha being tied up yeah. and without having to do it the old school way, which was I'm going to go through the system and then buy my way out of it and be free that way. Cause there are people who have done that. Yeah. They're big and they're quote unquote free. Right. Um, have ownership of all their stuff. I think, Technically, Michael might have did did that in some ways, but then again, this is where we get into the other part of the game, right? You get that big, you're that much of an entity, and you're not tied to any other entities. Do people even want you around like that? That's a different game. Not being a big company, multiple people, multiple stakeholders that are keeping it all involved, partners, right? being a single individual who has all of that power or an invisibility within an industry that's built different. Hey man, now you got into some, some deep conspiracy, you know. I'm just yeah, I know you're right. I'm you know saying. what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't, I'm just saying. I ain't disagreeing. I'm saying, you know, that's where that's where it gets uh, the other side of the music. I, right. I, I, <laughs> look, and I'm not and I'm not even trying to like tiptoe way over on that side of the pond, the dark side of the pond even just strictly business and competition and not even, you know, yeah, getting into the d darker stuff is like, well, people are going to make it hard. I don't think people realize how much there is a overall industry incentive to keep things how they are as much as possible. Right? Like I'm a major label, you're a major label, there's another major label and we're all competing. But then when we see, oh snap, there's something coming to disrupt us. We're gonna try to figure out. Yeah, that is true. Like how to yeah, make this shit work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Band together. A band like, together a little bit. It's just like I can't remember which label, but I'm sure the 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 majors felt screwed over a little bit by the first major who did the fix deal with TikTok. Oh yeah. Because they were all holding out. <laughs> Everybody wanted, you know, hey, I want to get paid per stream essentially, right? <laughs> and one did the big lump stone, and that set the tone. Once you got that precedent, the other ones kind of got to fall in line, right? So it all affects them, how the industry is moving, how artist deals are set up, all of that stuff. But right now, what do they do? They figured out a way to have these distribution companies so we're still connected. Yeah. And y'all can feel independent. Yeah, you get more freedom, but I, st I still got a leash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> still yeah. got a leash. Oh, I invested in Spotify. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get as much as TikTok as I can, but TikTok got that. They, they, that's a different animal right now. Oh, I'm invested in it. Well, Spotify has uh, the CD Baby. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, you indie, but Spotify, I got CD Baby and major labels in Spotify. I can't remember if the majors are still completely in Spotify. I know that they had the sales sell off a little bit or something like that at one point, but like things, <sighs> look, man, the people that in a certain space and that are benefiting from the industry being a certain way, they're not going to let it all go out. Like we talked about when Drake was up for a new contract and Drake could have left being completely independent and the domino effect that that would have had. Yeah. Like the, it was incentive for me as a label. Drake signed to you. Hey, bro, how much you need? You need 10 mil to make sure Drake stays deal to add on top. I'm like, don't be cheap, bro. Come on, go ahead and make that. That's what I would be like, right? Yeah. Just to keep the climate, the climate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think we also underestimate that as a whole is like so the the industry old money always wants to keep the old environment yeah. let's put it that way yeah. and then new money tries to fight for it and then when new money finally figures it out they become old money and want to keep the old environment <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it's it's an interesting paradox that we're in but what I see in major labels history they've been very good at buying time to figure out a new program, all right? It's like we use these rights to slow people down, so shit can't innovate too fast. We can throw copyrights, and we can sue you. We can take all your mu all music off your platform, or not let you get music in the first place. So it buys just enough time for us to figure out. Oh yeah, we want to be distributors, and we want to you know get invest in this company and this company and this tech. So you still in business with us anyway. All right, so I don't know what that new thing is, but the new thing that they're really trying to be, they're thinking less about independent artists individually and more about that AI music shit. Oh, how can we make sure that doesn't leave us? Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It's a it's an interesting argument about can you be as big as Drake? I think we generally agree that it's not it ain't a with that five years thing. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah. Let's I mean, say that. I'm talking about, if, you know, we're looking at our new Young superstars is like between 22 and 26 right now. So it's around when they hit in their 30s. We'll start saying it. But one of them, I think. I don't know who. What type of genre do you think he'll be? Probably pop or rap. Yeah. Maybe not. I think, I think pop. You think pop? Yeah. Pop, pop. or Latin. Might be rapper. Or... Latin. Might be Latin. Oh, man. I'm glad you said that because the one person we didn't talk about was Bad Bunny. Bad Buddy has an amazing deal, right? Now, he has his major label. They're doing distribution. So he's a co-owner in his label, all that great stuff. And if you can do that, do that. Do you look at Bad Bunny as completely independent or do you look at him as just independent of the major labels? Independent of the major labels. But I think he's also signed to a major or his. His partnership label, I think, is connected to a major distributor. I want to say, I'm not hundred percent sure. Don't quote me on that. Let's no, let's no, <laughs> let's take some time and just go ahead and Google it because I think it's important for this conversation. So oh, no, because like I made this TikTok about Bad Bunny one time, like I got educated so much in the conversation. It's on my TikTok <laughs> if y'all want to see that. You know, what I'm saying just thought it out there, cover to save me. But oh, but I learned so much from the comments on that post, bro. This is about his situation, but I think and you know Sam too. Sam is such a big. Bad Bunny Stan. Oh, yeah. Bad Bunny Researcher. Let's see. Oh, wait, no. Come on. How could a... Oh, wait. Oh, she's spitting. Hey, look, no, yeah, we want to just go ahead and play this clip. We done came across a random <laughs> clip. Let's let's see this. Let's see what she's talking about. This nice young lady. Let me see. What's her name? Let's shout her out before we say it. The only Kayla. Shout out to you. Let's see what she told me. Uh, Did you know that Bad Bunny has a 90-10 contract? So basically what that means is Bad Bunny is taking home 90% of his revenue from music and streams. So Bad Bunny has a management deal with Rima Entertainment, but that's all they are. They just manage him as an artist. The 90-10 comes from his distribution deal with The Orchard, which falls under Sony. So with that distribution deal, Bad Bunny is taking home 90%. All right, there we go. Yeah. So, I mean, we could let her play it, uh, say what she was saying, but 
that's the concept that we're talking about because that's what we're going to see next. Maybe we'll find somebody who has no distributor that's connected to a, or a, a major or anything like that. But under that particular agreement, do you just consider that independent of a major or do you call that independent in general? No, independent of a major because it's like one orchard is connected, orchard is orchard, and then Bad Bunny is Bad Bunny. When those two things come together, you essentially have the same level of power and resources as a major label. It's like, that's it, like, well-connected distribution company meets artists that is having a great moment right now or had a great yeah. lot of couple of moments. Right When those two things pair together, bro, the effect is almost no different than the major label effect. I got a, <laughs> I got a major label with a way better deal. Exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, let me, let's finish saying what she said. Of his revenue. He also gets a $30 million advance before he drops an album. Now, whether the album is a flop or not, which never is, he is getting $30 million off the top. Oh, no, I'm going to have to cut Shawty off. Uh, the music. Yeah, oh, that music. Uh, yeah. Hey, I, I saw you kind of bopping to the music a little bit. I'm like, hold up, is that music? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, shoot. All right, so yeah. Sorry, we can't let you play. Don't mess up our copyright. But, nah, that, um, I think that's the real conversation. It's just, do you consider that independent or not? Yeah. Right? No. I think Again, to me, it goes back to semantics, and I get tired of the semantics of, hey, you're in a partnership, but I'm, you still came to me with this same-ass deal. It's like, oh, yeah, man. No, nah, but it's a <laughs> partnership, though. It's like, no, nah, don't be doing it. Like, no, nah, you, you know, so we're still getting the exact same resources pretty much mm -hmm. once you get to this, at the same level, all right, from those same entities. Mm -hmm. That's not independent. In the in the way that is marketed, right? It gets marketed as this pure relationship that's completely in house, no real connections. And again, when you hear this from me, I always want to keep in mind: this is not me saying there's anything wrong with being independent. That's not me saying there's anything wrong with being connected to majors, any of that stuff. I'm always about just seeing the game for what it is and make sure. Your paperwork and your numbers suit you, right? Yeah, you got that 90-10. Look, would you be mad again saying, oh, I got a label, but you get, did 90-10? You get 90-10, you good. You get your 90-10. Happy. That's the part that matters more than the semantic itself. So that's all my ways, my argument. I just want things to be clearly defined and the field to be laid out before we just jump into these cut these systems or follow these words and these trending topics because that's the shit that fucks with indie artists on the outside that are inspired by let's just say a bad money or inspired by a Central C or Russ or whoever right I, yes these artists have more flexibility they have larger amounts of money <laughs> you know that they're, yeah. that they're getting per you know, per deal or whatever. And they control their entity, their primary entity, right? They can leave agreements. They have a lot of leverage. I think that's the part that's more important versus the word independent or not. Just so just follow the right parts of that game versus that general idea. Cause then you get these guys shit on YouTube like us. <laughs> like just saying indie 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 right but they're not telling you what indie means and these people are usually interpreting it as completely diy mm -hmm. and that's not the same shit yeah that's why to me the the growth the, uh not the growth i was about to say the um it's like the growth of the our space has been like you see some people stepping more out of that narrative right and more into what you said hey do what's best for your situation because yeah it's like bro unless you you want to truly be independent, bro. If you're not either doing every position or you train every person for every position you have, yeah, bro, you're not. You can never be truly independent. You know what I'm saying? This is a collaborative game, bro. Like, you know, you can't get around that. Yeah. And with collaboration, it means you get to lose that title, bro. Now, maybe we will one day see this super, super artist that comes along and does that. But, hey, in the meantime, man, you know, that shit working, bro. Take, take the route. 
Just keep pushing. <laughs> hey, shout out to La Russell though for that clip inspiration and doing what you've done so far, man. Like you said, you on that the Breakfast Club. A lot of people ain't on the Breakfast Club. A lot of people aren't. So and part of that though comes from doing dope shit. So we talk about getting to those levels, getting in some of those rooms without certain relationships. We are in a way space where you can get higher up. Damn near completely independent of those traditional majors just because people have power where they can say, oh yeah, I like what you're doing. Yeah. That's how you get yourself into some roles without necessarily being in deals. And especially when we talk about outside music, right? Charlemagne is in their music. Mm-hmm. Like that's how his main thing. Oh, I just like you. I'm not saying, I don't know exactly how he got there, but I'm sure Charlemagne has brought people on that he just liked what they were doing. Yeah. Cause he seems to be the, the more A and R individual on Breakfast club. Yeah. You know I mean, making yeah. connections and bringing yeah. people in like that. So look, do those shit and do a good business. And you'll be all right. Yeah. All it is. Well, yeah, well, yeah, it's <laughs> close to me. No, most of it. See, that's the problem. That's the problem, bro. We, we, we try to be accurate versus just doing sound bites and niggas just want to hear sound bites. Because, like you said, the whole idea of being independent we're, or major, we've always been on that nuance. People are starting to be cool, do what's best for you. We've always said that because I ain't want nobody life in my hands listening yeah, on right. YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then you like, oh, yeah, I did this because of Sean. And I'm like, Yo, bro, you know what I mean? I ain't mean it like that or not in your particular circumstance. Yeah. So that's why I also love the format of podcasts. We, we can at least give more nuance and people don't just hear these sound bites and then take it around with it in the wrong direction. Yeah. So now if you hear a sound bite and it ruins your life, hey, man, you should have wanted to watch the full episode. Full episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I got proof. Two more sentences you would have said, you would have saw me say, Except for, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, man. We even go too much longer for this episode today. Hopefully, y'all liked it. Uh, let us know in the comments. Share it with people because we're trying to get as many followers as possible. We're trying to make this pod as big as possible so we can bring on dope people, do dope shit, bring y'all great information. And as always, I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.